Joining me now, uh, this is fabulous, Pat Buchanan. Check him out at Buchanan.org slash blog slash columns if you want to go deeper. And don't forget his latest book. I think it's his latest, The Greatest Comeback, How Nixon Rose from Defeat to Create the New Majority. So, Pat, welcome back to the program. Um, so is it your assessment, too, that the the Hillary Clinton corruption story is finally leaking through to the public? Oh, I think it's leaking through the public. I think, frankly, the perception that she really is not truthful and not trustworthy and not all around fair and square is one of the reasons she's got such a horrible problem right now. But I will say this, you know, a lot of this is not going to be revealed before the election. But I think if Hillary won, I think in early in her first term, in her first year, I think there'd be so much spilling out that there would be a call for an independent independent counsel or a special prosecutor, as there was with uh, Richard Nixon back in 1973. And I think that's the real problem that Hillary Clinton faces if she wins the election. A, it would be the independent counsel, special prosecutor, and B, I do agree with Newt that the Clinton Foundation, uh, um, I mean, you dig in there and you keep turning o- over the sewer caps, and uh, I think you're going to find an awful lot. Well, yeah, um, look, uh, the the FBI wants to do it, and what we learned from the Wall Street Journal is senior people at the Justice Department, once again, that's the Obama slash Lynch Justice Department slash Holder, uh, said, no, can't do it. Sh- shut it down. Quit it. Uh, shoot him out for continuing the investigation after the DOJ thought uh, that they had that they'd put a lid on it. Uh, you know, I, they can hold it for a while. And, uh, and again, I go back to Nixon. I've just finished a new book on my White House years. And what happened was that, uh, you know, uh, when we appointed an, an attorney general back in 1973, Elliot Richardson, he agreed to an independent counsel, special prosecutor, because so much was spilling out. I mean, if that happens, and I think it's going to happen, you will get even liberals accepting the idea that uh, it's got to be looked at by an independent counsel. I mean, if you got scandal and you got the president of the United States is named the attorney general, and even the liberal press, I think, and the Clintonite press at that point will say, look, you got to have somebody who's neutral, who's out from outside, an independent counsel who's nonpartisan and who's neither harshly Republican or Democrat to investigate these things. And frankly, those are much more effective, John, than, uh, than these congressional investigations, which, in my judgment, always have too many guys who want to get on television and not enough who really want to do the work behind the scenes. Well, Pat, but the problem with investigating the Clinton Foundation in, in, in the so-called, quote-unquote, intersection between uh, foundation activities and her tenure holding office as Secretary of State is she killed all the communications that would have outlined it. It's all gone. No, no. this is why I almost don't want to say it is. Uh, the, um, the, uh, the Congress, the Republicans in Congress ought to demand right now that the Clinton Foundation secure all of their emails between uh, the Foundation and the State Department when Hillary Rodham Clinton was Secretary of State. And I think it, because a lot, any communication she had with the foundation will be in the files, the email files of the foundation. And if you wake up one morning, <laughs> John, and learn that the Clinton Foundation had erased all their emails <laughs> well, that were more than four years old, you'll know what's going on. Well, but Pat, we, we've got to assume they've already done it. <laughs> Well, I think if you issue a subpoena, you'll find out if they've done it or if they say they've all been erased tomorrow. (laughs) This is just, I mean, look. Listen, John, I'm a little hesitant to say these things because unearthed in 73, just before Nixon resigned, was a Buchanan memo saying burn the tapes. (laughs) Well, of course. (laughs) I'm sure that they... I wasn't a dumb little kid. (laughs) Now you're going to find a WikiLeaks... um, Email from Podesta to, to the foundation saying, take the Buchanan route. Don't, 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 look, 
he's not foolish either. <laughs> I mean, there's a certain internal alarm system in a lot of us in politics here. <laughs> uh, do you know I made a uh, record? Uh, this is a terrible digression, but I got to tell right. you, um, I made a a a a recording of the missing 18 minutes. Right. Back then, uh, made it into a record and actually sold a thousand of them. <laughs> had a guy playing Nixon. Did you had get a guy, guy playing could imitate the voice real well. Well, nobody knew what Haldeman sounded like, but we knew what Nixon sounded like. <laughs> and, it, and it was a microphone under the desk, and you heard coffee cups rattling and stuff like that. Anyway, okay, so look, here's Hillary fighting back against this tidal wave of, of corruption stuff with, hey, Donald Trump called Alicia Machado fat. Well, the uh, trouble with that is, is we know that he called her Miss Piggy and he called her fat. And that's lost its – these charges like that, after a little bit, lose their toxicity. And you keep using them, and people don't pay any attention. They've already factored it in, and they've moved on. And I think that has about it an aspect of desperation on Hillary Clinton's part to bring out, you know, Miss Argentina from 1995 or, or Miss Universe from 1995-96. So, but I think this, this email thing and this FBI thing, increasingly it is taken on, I mean, people are very interested in it. I mean, you're probably like me. We we follow Trudge very early in the morning these days. <laughs> you certainly do. You certainly do. And uh, I, I follow Catherine Harridge's reporting, and my son oh, yeah, Jake Fox is. News. is... I do at night. I get home at night, and I watch, uh, you know, Brett Bear and the guy, all the guys on there, and I move around to, you know, to CNN and Fox and even MSNBC. But that's this is where it's at. The last story of the last week is the uh, is the FBI and it's uh, Anthony Weiner and it's Uma who's probably got a real problem uh, and the initial problem is that she's uh, she told the FBI you know I turned in all the devices that contain any any work product from state any emails on that and how's she going to say that you know she I mean is she going to say I really forgot the fact that I sent them to my my husband's home computer that we share. So well, that's the problem, and then you've got security stuff on that, and and you know, and she's got Hillary's got problems down the road, you know. As Nixon Nixon once he was the guy that said that, you know, the problem is not the original offense, the silly break-in, for example, that took place over at the Watergate. Uh, Nixon didn't know it was being done or had been done, and it's the cover-up. And Nixon naturally, you, you say, what did our these Dumbo guys do? We're going to have to get them lawyered up now. And you take care of your guys, but you don't realize that then you're, you know, you're the chief law enforcement officer and you're trying to take care of your political friends who, who blundered. So you get into two issues, perjury and obstruction of justice. And those are the problems I think Hillary's going to face down the road on these emails. Yeah. Well, um, it'll give us both something to do if there is a Clinton presidency, huh? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we thought it would all be over on November 8th. Oh, no. Oh, no. No, no. <laughs> it's just beginning. Pat Buchanan. It's, it's, it's uh, only if, look, let me say this about Trump. Uh, he's not out of this yet. I mean, there's a, you know, we're in the, late in the fourth quarter and we're in the two minute drill. Uh, but he's not totally out of this yet. I mean, he's like a football team that is eight points behind after to score a touchdown and then convert a two-point uh, extra point, and then they go into overtime. But uh, that's where he is. I think there's a, I think there's a shot for him. The momentum's in his direction. One way you see these things, John, is take a look at how they're all behaving now. And you look at Carville, for example, and look at Hillary bringing out uh, Miss Universe. I mean, that's not the strategy of someone who's, who's coasting to victory. No, not at all. And uh, Carville and those guys are freaking out. Uh, Carville... Who knows better was screaming yesterday it's the republicans in cahoot with the kgb which hasn't existed for yeah, 20 i think it's years. the fsb but that, it, it doesn't have the same cachet that's right <laughs> it, it doesn't ring the bells in the same way so he's calling on the kgb pat it's great to talk to you uh, everybody should check out pat at buchanan.org slash blog uh and check out his uh, latest book which is the one right before the one he's about to finish 
Uh, that one was called The Greatest Comeback, How Nixon Rose from Defeat to Create the New Majority. Pat, always great to talk to you. Thanks you a lot. You take it easy, Tom. Right. Bye-bye.